announcement. The hemp revolution will not be televised. I repeat, the hemp revolution will not be televised. Welcome to the Hemp Revolution podcast, the global hotspot for the buzz and the cannabis. You can hear the stories of the green rush from the dreamers who are writing the rules, innovating the business, and changing history forever. Immerse yourself with the fascinating stories from the leaders in the hemp health revolution to learn how we are changing the game forever. Introducing your hosts, James Brinkerhoff and Sonia Gomez. We are so excited to be able to provide you sort of a behind the scenes look and direct access to some of the pioneers here in the industry. So today, my guest is a longtime family friend and pioneer in the cannabis and hemp space, working in all different facets of the industry, most recently becoming the founder of Oil Farm Supply, whose main focus is to really support the seed to sale process inside of the hemp industry, guaranteeing that from the very beginning where the seed is planted in the soil, that we are producing the highest quality organic product so that when we as the consumers get that finished product, we know it's going to have the most medicinal content that is available. So with that being said, please help me welcome my good friend, David Dixon. Hi, David. How are you? My name is Dave Dixon, and uh, I'm in the sustainable development movement since the early 90s. I'm very interested in sustainable agriculture. So I'm in a position to help hemp farmers develop a sustainable or an organic approach. The company that I'm working with has been producing organic nutrients since 1972, very specifically focused on bio inoculants and bringing life back into the soil. So what what we're doing with the hemp industry for the emergence, the reemergence of this industry has uh, had been limited to organic certification because the FDA simply did not acknowledge it as a legal product. So, so both the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration have prevented the emergence of organic products on the marketplace. Now that's changing and this is a health-driven industry. So that component is going to be very, very um, desirable. Along with that, because I'm in a network of farms, producers, manufacturers, laboratories have come to me to source clean product. And that's kind of what what I mean by a, a, a soil to sales approach. We're there to help a farmer go through all of those steps. What I love about your business and the approach that you've taken that sort of sets you apart is that you can support a business from the seed all the way to the sale process. You've really, because of your experience and expertise in the farm cultivation, your real passion for uh, sustainable farming practices that help cultivate a superior product, now being able to apply that into the hemp space. Hemp is naturally a plant that absorbs a lot of the toxicity out of the soil. Pairing that with the organic nutrients or superior nutrients that you're feeding these new and legacy farms. Talk to me a little bit about how you're going, you know, the quality of the product right now has been subpar and kind of hit or miss on the market, right? But now with legalization, we are going to be celebrating a superior product and sort of a standard that the that will be consumer driven because we'll be able to taste and know the difference between a low quality and a high quality product. What are you most excited to see in the evolution of this industry? I think that product quality and product consistency has definitely been one of the problematic areas to this the emerging industry. And I think you're seeing a number of uh, companies that have made the investment to be able to produce on the large scale. They've had to take production into their own hands or at least at least present a production platform to a given farmer. That means 
supplying the seed stock and having some kind of control over the managing practice. And that's, you know, that's a pretty significant undertaking. That's requiring that your contract farmers will, you know, will follow your protocol. And I think we've also seen a new level of testing come into the industry with what what in, in California is known as a cat three test, category three, which goes as far as testing heavy metals. Because if you are, you know, if a, if a region has a high level of heavy metals in the soil, then several seasons of hemp are going to have to be planted in that location before you can actually uh, develop a product or put a product on the marketplace. So legacy farms become really desirable in that kind of circumstance. It, it eliminates that uh, potentiality. And, and you know, as you see, we're, we're using hemp as a bioremediation tool. That product, you know, we have to ensure that that product never finds its way into, you know, the public marketplace. Well, we all have not always been so sophisticated um, as far as, you know, government standards are concerned. This is truly a grassroots industry built by the Straganonas of the world, the, the woodland witches <laughs> or the earth people. The people who have really pioneered this industry are still, you know, working in the woods. They're still, you know, toying around with genetics. They're still doing things that mainstream eyes cannot see and yet they are the heavy influence in setting a standard of operation amongst pioneers like ourselves what is what do you think is going to be the standard or progression that this industry needs to adopt and talk to me a little bit about the olden days that frame your approach uh, to cre- to supporting this new standard uh, being adopted in the industry. You go back and you look at 10, 10 15 years ago, the, the level of THC and common products, and you see that exponentiated growth in, in, in this, this last sector. And think of the hemp industry on a time scale, it would put us back in like the mid 70s, you know, in terms of the, the amount of agricultural work there is to do there and the the levels of beneficial compounds and just the entire full spectrum approach, what the industry is going to be able to do, you know, from now and within the next five to 10 years, I think we're going to be seeing true medicinal levels on the marketplace in a a kind of strength that it's going to change everyday conditions. And I think to me that Really, the most exciting part about the industry is the strength of this plant and what that can, you know, what that that holds with modern extraction technology. That's the key difference. I mean, you look at a nineteen a nineteen ten list of not necessarily licensed, but let's say um, commercial products that were on the marketplace and the range of conditions that that those treated at that point in time you add modern extraction technology to that and and and, you know it's just it's just really opening a new paradigm for for health in this country and health in this world man i'm so excited about that same thing because the effectiveness of the products that were being extracted in mason jars on the front porches of you know most of our friends houses the transformations that people were experiencing from that right was so powerful, so profound, and are sort of the the foundational pillars of how this modern day industry is coming to fruition right now. The success stories of that grassroots product development movement is really the foundation, acting as the foundation for you know, the speed in which legalization or safe and legal access to these types of products and its derivatives uh, is pretty fascinating. And I'm, I second the excitement because I've seen it from, you know, firsthand experience, what the history of it looks like. And by embracing modern day medical science and research, truly understanding how all of these components are working together to create transformation and then allowing us to up-level 
you know, the production, the quality, the standards of operation inside of this industry, like we are very quickly going to see global adoption here. And I'm already a huge part of it with our education platform. You're already a huge part of it with your cultivation and making sure that manufacturers have access to high quality product. And we've talked a lot about this. You know, I've had leading scientists, leading product makers talk about what you start with is what you end up with. So sourcing an incredible, you know, high quality product that is pesticide free, herbicide free, you know, as close to mother nature as you can get is everything. So I'm really excited to embrace that. Talk to me about the economics on the business side of things. We're seeing a black market industry come and move into the mainstream. Every day we're seeing corporate heads jump from corporate into the cannabis space. More and more people are coming out of the cannabis and hemp closet and embracing their interest, their use, their involvement in the space. What do you see from your perspective? What are some of the things we have to look forward to in the industry? Definitely been like the Wild West. I, I spoke with a friend this morning, you know, who spent a considerable part of his life in the black market yeah. and has had an experience within the hemp industry over the last you know, three years that, that made his uh, previous life pale in comparison to, to the amount of dishonesty and false information. And simple, simple technical standardization that has not taken place yet, where lab results or, or the same body of the same sampled lot of material can sent, get sent to five different labs and yield five completely different results. And so quality, quality testing and testing standards are, are really the foundation of where the industry has to start sampling you know you 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 get sampling methodology that sort of selectively goes and samples the best part of a crop for a test and then and then you know and then you're getting a farmer that's representing those numbers as as if his whole lot held that kind of quantity and then the, you know when the buyer retests we're looking at you know, four to five to eight to 10 percentage points difference, which just has, has fostered a level of mistrust within the, you know, within the core of the industry, people that are investing in the industry, people that have invested in infrastructure to build the industry, hedging their bets every time they're making a supply purchase. That's one of the major sort of obstacles to you know, really raising the business. And then there's the subject on the consumer side of how does a consumer know what they're getting in a bottle and how that relates to the price of the bottle and to the efficacy of the material that it contains. For example, you you see you see the market completely flood, flooded, you know, you know, to actually Whole Foods does not have a CBD product, but a lot of, a lot of your, your natural food stores, are yeah, natural food stores, co-ops, you know, you, you'll see four or five of them, you know, generally they'll range seven, 750 milligrams to 200. Um, and, you know, a, a, a person can take that all day long uh, and never really feel the effect when you take you know take 0.75 milligrams of a product that is 20 24 2500 milligrams per ounce and then it's sort of like wow the lights come on and oh my god my my shoulders fell out of my ears and i haven't felt this relaxed in 5 years you know um so it's so there's a lot of consumer education uh, that really needs to be done, and you know uh, uh, the service that you're providing is is really invaluable because people need access to, to to unbiased information, and I think that that's really a critical component of 
both the cannabis industry and the, the hemp and CBD industry as it re- relates to truly a truly healthy relationship with the plants. And I, I think we're going to find from this, you know, this new national freedom that we have to pursue this relationship. I think we're going to find a lot of wonderful things. I'm really looking forward to both the medicinal applications, especially the nanotization of CBD products. And when that starts to move into the THC and the cannabis products, I think we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to realize new paradigms of, you know, a disease treatment with, with that kind of technology. I think a lot of people are just biding their time inside of the hemp space until THC comes into play. And the whispers in sort of the inner circle of the industry, the folks who are building big business here is building a brand for yourself and your company is going to be the thing that sets us apart. Everyone is now all of a sudden exploding into what is our brand? What is our message? What is our mission? Whereas that's kind of where we started. We didn't promote products. Just like you, you weren't promoting products. You were promoting something that you are generationally passionate about, sustainable living. You know, how are we going to build this industry from an eco-responsible place, you know, and building that into your business model. And so now all of the product pushers and potion makers are like, wait a minute, we have to have a mission. We have to have a message. We have to build a brand. So it's interesting to sort of see that evolution. And I think a lot of folks who want to quote unquote, play it safe are starting in the hemp space. We're also starting to see big business come in here and infiltrate where new brands with the right marketing, with the right messaging, with the right imagery are getting, you know, two, three, four hundred million dollar deals put onto their desks right now because big business wants it, right? They want to own everything and pay a, pay the little people out and build the business from there. What effect do you think, biz, I mean, the food industry, the farming industry, that's one of the largest, it's part of the industrial revolution, one of the largest that the world has to contend with. And you're at the forefront sort of establishing, establishing the standard of operation for the hemp space. What are you excited about and what are you concerned about as far as big business's involvement? Well, I think we have two years to make it happen. I, I agree with you 100%. Now's the time to make your brand. You can make your brand and generate recognition within the next couple of years. There's going to be a seat within the in- industry for you for a long time to come. I think the the current margins that we're seeing are going to get realistic pretty quick. You know, I mean, right now they are some of the most exciting investment margins on, on any market. So that's going to give it give us a, a limited time frame. I hope that the cannabis and the and the the hemp and CBD space continue to remain separated. I think they should be separated. I think they have uh, very different foundations in terms of their consumer base. You're not going to find you know. A, Every cannabis aficionado is going to w- necessarily want a relationship with CBD. It's not quite the same, although the two work excellently together. And I see the intersection of them both being, you know, truly life changing and 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 more health specific. I really, I, I really hope that we can look at California's experience versus. Colorado's experience in terms of legislation and who gets access to this industry. You know, from, you know, I, I first, I first was in Humboldt County at, at the dying end of the logging industry. And I, and I remember as a complete outsider to that region, recognizing the, the fear in people's faces about what they were going to do with their lives. And, you know, recently I, I've been in Humboldt again, and I see that same, I recognize that same kind of fear in the, the cannabis culture there because of the way that California has, you know, I, mean, I, I continue to hear the analogy of two years of legalization have done what 30 years of eradication could not do 
in terms of putting people out of business. And it's, you know, it's, it's sad because you and I both have a personal relationship with the plant itself and, you know, her nature to help people. And, and so I, you know, I think, I mean, I'm already starting to see the grassroots funding for legislation in California to overturn Prop 56 and implement something that's more farmer friendly. Yeah, and it really has to be because it all it all starts at the source. You know, everyone's worried about the end product and the consumer, but really business is this business, this industry is not this industry without the source the proper sourcing of the product. So this is going to be really super valuable for the artist and farmer, manufacturers, medicine makers. And for you guys who are watching this, it's going to be important for you to, similar to the food industry, decide who and what you are supporting. You know, you can buy genetically modified foods that are coming out of Monsanto's you know, backyard, or you can choose to support the organic movement, or you can take it a step further and dive into local farms that are producing high quality foods. Well, it's the same thing in this industry. There are the industrial farmers who are going at it full bore. Most of the product is coming out of China. There's not a ton of standardization. There's not a ton of regulation around how products are being produced. And that truly trickles down to the end product that you are consuming or recommending if you're building a business. Likewise here, California is under, or the um, medicine makers and the pioneers are under very real threat right now to lose their homes, their businesses, everything that they've established for themselves and their families, because the regulations are really built and designed for bigger business to come in. So I don't want you guys to find any discouragement here. I really want you to understand what we're sharing with you and, and empower yourself with real information so that you can decide, again, what part of the industry are you supporting? If you're from the islands, then you know the importance of supporting, you know, local business. If you are from small town communities, you have seen how your communities have been transformed by big box stores coming in. If you are from bigger cities, maybe you enjoy the luxuries of ind industrialization and are also starting to feel the effects on how we have to compromise on quality. So we're still at the crest of this wave that while you are choosing to build your business, while you are choosing to become a public advocate inside of your family and friend and community circles, while you are sort of entering into the green rush right now, you can have a full picture of what this industry was, what it is, and what it has the potential to be and decide how you want to participate from there. There are really amazing, you know, I'm sharing this stuff with you so that you know what our standards are and all of the products, all of the information, all of the people that we bring into this platform have been vetted based off of that moral code that we have and our commitment to you to provide the highest quality medicines that are available on the marketplace from farmers, practitioners, people who are passionate and experienced with developing these products. And they're all available for you guys right here. So we take a lot of the guesswork out for you. Go ahead and check out our recommend, recommended products page and make sure that you comment and ask any questions that you have. We always love your feedback and pop over into our Facebook page to connect with family members from all over the world who are at different stages of learning and would love to have open conversations and discussions with you about the subjects that are being discussed in side of these interviews. David, what are some final thoughts that you have or some insight that you have about the industry as far as opportunity goes? And what is your main mission that you are working towards right now? One of the primary opportunities right now, especially product development, is nanotization technology. Uh, this is approached by where full spectrum and isolate products can, can be basically delivered in a small enough molecule size that greatly increases the bioavailability of the product. You're, you're, you're getting 10% to as much as 80% as more bioavailable products through a nanotized product. And, and I think as the industry goes, uh, we're going to see a, a a formula that's going to show dollar value per bioavailable milligram. 
Uh, and I think that's be setting our, our site. Other areas of, of interest is just the new products on the marketplace, the, the new uses and, and just the genetic the genetic realm of product development. Like, like we said, starting from the farmer, seeing more elements enhanced within the plant by crossbreeding from cannabis strains to traditional hemp strain. And what's your main mission right now inside of this space? Uh, you know, supporting farmers and trying to utilize the the hemp industry and the, the growth of this product to strengthen organic farming on a, a significant scale. You know, for for many years, or, organic production has been a lower level than agronomics. That doesn't have to be that way anymore. Product development is on the scale nowadays where we can do. 50 to 100,000 acre farms and and provide a a reasonable cost equivalent to, you know, poison approach. Um, And I think that, you know, continuing myself, you know, personally continuing to find my own brand and develop that where where I want to specialize. As much as I want to support the industry, I want to have a stake in it as well. And, and that's what I'm continuing to, uh, to work with. I think, I think a high level tincture is a product that, that is easily a daily use family product. And it's just a matter of refining the right numbers to, to make something like that viable. Yeah, I'm so excited. We're uh, when we're off record, I'll share with you some secrets that we have moving in the background that serves that exact purpose. So um, I'm really super excited, and it's as always. I want to just share with you guys: it is our mission to empower you with the truth about hemp and cannabis, so that you can make empowered and educated decisions about how you want to treat yourself, the people that you love, and the conditions that you might be suffering from. Hemp, CBD, cannabis, and other plant medicines have been and it absolutely necessary to build and support your body's natural functions without chemical alterization or or infusion there are healthy habits and practices that you can develop and incredible plant medicines that are perfect just the way that God made them that you can utilize to transform how you feel on a daily basis. And ultimately we want to empower you to live healthier, happier, longer lives so that you can enjoy the things that you are most passionate about and the people that you care about the most. For now, I am your educator for today, Sonia Gomez. This was my longtime, very good friend, David Dixon, again, the founder of Oil Farm Supply on a mission to standardize and increase the potency and viability of the products that are being produced for our consumption and for the care of our families. For now, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure that you leave your comments below and check out our family on Facebook. And I will see you guys in the next bonus broadcast. Thanks so much, David. I really appreciate you coming on with us today. Thanks for listening to another rock star episode of the Hemp Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sonia Gomez. And just for you, we took notes on this episode along with the links and other resources mentioned inside of today's show. Get them for free right now by going to the emeraldcircle.com. Now, if you want more on this, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcast or wherever you like to listen, and you will be automatically entered in to our monthly giveaway where you can get swag bags, all kinds of cool gifts and discounts from our guests and exclusive offers that are only mentioned right here in the Hemp Revolution podcast. I can't wait for you to share this with your friends. With your help, we've been able to impact millions of people's lives around the world with the truth about hemp and cannabis. And we know that you love us so much that you're going to leave a review and rate us right now on your favorite platform to absorb content just like this. Now, we challenge you to dream big and love the life that you live. Thanks so much, and we hope to see you on our next episode of the Hemp Revolution Podcast. Ciao for now.